Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Pyathlon. In today's video, we'll be adding our zombie to our game, and then in the next couple of videos, we'll be adding collision detection and keeping track of the score, and then we'll have a really built out game. So remember, we're going to spawn this zombie at a random location. So before we can actually do that, we need to import this function that we'll be using called rand range, which will give you a random integer between zero and the value you specify. And we need to import that function from the random library. So we'll just say from random, import rand range. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to add our, we need to load in our zombie image, our zombie character. So we'll just set zombie equal to pi game that image that load. This is the same thing we did for our character and for our background, zombie.png. Remember, you can find this image on pathlon.com. I will include a link to that in the description, and it will be in the same place where you can find the character and the background file for this game. All right, so we're going to need to give our zombie an initial position. And so the zombie is going to start on the left side of the screen and move to the right side of the screen. And then what we'll do from there is we'll update and so we'll actually be able to move the zombie and it'll be able to spawn at random different Y locations. So in order to do that, we need to set some initial starting points. So we'll create this variable zombie X position. And we'll set it equal to zero because that's the left side of the screen. And we're going to have a zombie Y position. And this is going to be random because we want our zombie to spawn at random points uh, with regards to the Y axis. So this is where we'll use our rand range function. So we'll set that equal to rand range. And then we'll pass in the height of our screen. So we don't want our zombie to spawn off screen. So we want, it, we want to limit this to zero to the height of our screen. And remember, you can change this height variable to anything else. I just set mine equal to 800, but you can feel free to change that if you're on a different device or you just want a different display. All right, so we have our initial X and Y position. And we're going to give our zombie a speed. And this speed is for every time our loop runs, how much are we going to move our zombie? So the larger the number you pick, then the more, the larger these jumps, so to speak, will be, and the faster your zombie will move. And the lower this number is, then the slower your zombie will move. And once again, you can play around with this number and get it right for whatever kind of gameplay you're going for. I'll just set it equals to 25 for now. I might change it later, but it's not a big deal either way. So we are, now we're going to add a function where we can actually update the, the position of our zombie. So we'll have this function, and I'll just call it add zombie application. And then we'll pass in the x, y coordinates for where we want to move our zombie to. And we'll do game display dot split, which is the function used to add an uh, image to the screen. We'll add our zombie, and then we need to pass in the tuple of the x and y coordinates. And for that, we'll just do x and y. Alright, so the next thing we need to do is we're actually going to go inside of our loop. And for this, you need to be inside of your while loop, but you don't want to be inside of your for loop. And we're going to actually update the position of our zombie every time this loop runs. So we'll take our zombie x position, and we'll add the zombie speed. We call it zombie speed, but more accurately it's the amount on the x-axis we're going to move our zombie by each time our loop runs. Zombie speed is just the name of our variable. And remember, once again, if our zombie moves off screen, then we want to bring it back to the left side of the screen at a new y position. So we'll say if the x position of the zombie, which is what we keep in our zombie x boss variable, if that's greater than or equal to the, the width of our screen, the width of our display, I mean. Then what we'll want to do is we want to set zombie x position equal to zero. And we're also going to want to reset the y position and respawn it at a different y value. And so to do that, we're just going to do zombie y position. And once again, we're just going to do ran range and pass in height. So what this is saying is if our zombie moves off the screen, so if the x position of the zombie is greater than the width of our screen, then move it back to the left side of the screen at a different Y position. And add our zombie to the screen at our given position. And so we need to come down here and make sure we're doing this after you add the background to the screen. Because if otherwise, you would add the background on top of your zombie, and then you would never actually see your zombie. 
So what we're going to do is after we write the background to the screen, we are going to add our zombie at location. And we're going to do zombie X position and zombie Y position. All right, and that is it. So we can save that and run it. And now what you'll see is we've officially spawned our zombie. And there's the zombie. So this zombie actually moves pretty fast, and this can be quite difficult to dodge. So you can feel free to adjust the numbers to whatever you want. But now we're starting to have what looks like a, a functioning game. All right, so as always, please comment, like, and subscribe, as well as visit us on social media, on Instagram and Twitter, and visit us on Pyathlon.com. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.